Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about something called the pOH. Now, OH, of course, stands for the hydroxide ion, and P stands for the power. So the power of the hydroxide ion, or better yet, an indication of how many hydroxide ions are in solution. So it's kind of the same thing as pH, except in this case, we're looking at the hydroxide ion. Now, for pure water at 25 degrees centigrade, we know that the concentration of the hydrogen ion is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. And we know that at neutrality, at 25 degrees centigrade, there's an equal, equal amount of hydrogen ions as there is hydroxide ions. So therefore, the concentration of hydroxide ions also has to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. So what we can say then is that the pH is equal to 7 and the pOH is equal to 7. If the concentrations are the same, then their pH and their pOH must be the same because the way we calculate the pH and the way we calculate the pOH is exactly the same, except for the pH, we take negative the log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and for the pOH, we take negative the log of the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And since the concentrations are the same, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter, then we can see that the pH and the pOH at that point has to be the same. Now when we add the two up, when we add up the pH and the pOH, we get 14. Hmm, that's interesting. So that means that if we know what the pOH is, we can then, or if we know what the pH is, we can calculate the pOH by simply subtracting the pH from 14 to get the pOH. For example, if the pH is 5, then the pOH must be 14 minus 5, which is equal to 9, which makes it very easy to figure out the concentration of either the pH or the pOH if we know the other one. For example, if the pH is 5, the concentration of that has to be 1 times 10 to the minus 5. If the pOH is 9, then the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 per mole. That's simply by taking this equation right here and reversing it, solving it for the, the concentration of the hydrogen ion or the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So then when we multiply those two together, the concentration of the hydrogen ion and the concentration of the hydroxide ion, we get 1 times 10 to the minus 5 times 1 times 10 to the minus 9, we get 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And there's that 14 again, that's the 14 that we saw over here, except there it's in the exponent because we're talking about concentrations. But notice, we always get that 14 there, in this case 1 times 10 to the minus 14, so we call that the ion product constant. It's a constant because it doesn't change. Well, it doesn't change if we assume the temperature doesn't change because if the temperature changes, Kw changes anyway. So this is what we call the ion product constant. If we multiply the concentration of the hydro hydrogen ion and the concentration of the hydroxide ion, together we will always get 1 times 10 to the minus 14, regardless what the ratios are of the concentration, regardless what they are. We always know that the product will be equal to that number. And so that's why we call that the ion product constant. So we do have to be careful though that at different temperatures, Kw is actually a different number because there's a lot more kinetic energy, there's a lot more agitation, and there's more probability from all the collisions that a higher number of water molecules will have a higher kinetic energy and therefore break those bonds and cause more of these ions to exist even in a neutral state. But that means that if this is the concentration of the hydrogen ion at the neutral state at 4 degrees centigrade, that must also be the concentration of the hydroxide ion at neutral state. And so when we multiply the two together, we get a different K, we get a different ion product constant. So now you realize that whenever you calculate the concentration of one, you can easily find the concentration of the other. Because if you have it in terms of concentration and you're given the concentration of the hydrogen ion and you want to figure out the concentration of the hydroxide ion, you simply take this number, the constant, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, and divide it by the concentration of the one, they get the concentration of the other. And if you have it in terms of pH, all you have to do is subtract. If you want to know the, P, the pH or the pOH, you simply take 14 minus the pH and get the pOH. And let me write it down just so you know, and let me use a different color. So if you want to know the, the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and you know the concentration of the hydrogen ion, all you have to do is take the constant, 1 times 10 to the 14th, and divide it by the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and that will give you the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So it's very easy to go back and forth between the concentration of the hydrogen ion and the concentration of the hydroxide ion if you have it in terms of the concentration or if you have it in terms of pH. So it's really easy to go from one to the other. So we might as well box these two equations 
because they're very important. And now you know how to go back and forth between the two.